Well, I'm, I was born and raised in Ohio. And then uh, I came to Northwestern University uh, as an undergraduate. And after that, and serving in the military, I worked in neighborhoods in Chicago as a neighborhood organizer. And uh, after doing that for quite a number of years, uh, sort of mid-career, I was asked to come to Northwestern University and help them start a center for urban, urban affairs. They wanted to have somebody who'd been a practitioner to join the people who are academics. And so uh, I went there and uh, carried on my interest in, in neighborhoods and local communities and developed a research program that evolved into something called the Asset-Based Community Development Institute. And uh, that's, uh, that organization is at Northwestern. We have a website for anybody who's interested in uh, looking at it, abcdinstitute.org. And uh, that institute has focused on what makes successful small communities. And we've done research all over the country and do now a lot of uh, training and consultation with uh, local groups. We're interested in how they can become uh, stronger. I spent a lot of years in neighborhoods organizing with people, neighborhood organizations, where they could be, become more powerful and get more of the things done that they needed to have done. And uh, most of these neighborhoods were neighborhoods where you would say the people would be working class or lower income. And that experience, of course, led me to see how much ability and capacity and commitment people in neighborhoods had. And then when I went to the university, uh, which was 1969, uh, after having spent about 20 years in the neighborhoods, I uh, was very surprised because what I found there was that uh, if you looked at research about urban neighborhoods uh, that universities were doing, it was all about what was wrong, the problems, the defects, the issues. And uh, if you looked at the same neighborhoods where I had come from, from a university, and you looked at their research, they were always defining these places as needy. And that neediness that they defined in their research, and they would define it by doing studies of how many teenage pregnant girls are there, how many drug addicts are there, how many below code houses are there, and on and on and on and on. That to me, it was just apparent that you could never understand urban neighborhoods if you looked at what the universities were telling you was the important data because all they knew about was uh, what was wrong. I often use a half full glass as an example of that. They, they were always studying the empty half. They seemed to have no knowledge of the full half. And therefore, I thought, <clears throat> if I'm at a university, the thing I can do that will be useful will be to document the full half. And so we began to do research on the nature of the activities that people did locally that made things better. Because all the university research was sort of about things that were wrong that outsiders could come and fix without much idea that there were assets there in the neighborhood that people had capacities and a lot of what could be done and was done to improve things was being done by the people who were there. So the university approaches at that time <clears throat> that were focused on deficits were studying needs, the empty half of the glass. And so we said, we'll study the full half of the glass, and we said those are the assets. And so we, that's how we got the name that we created, the Asset-Based Community Development Institute. And we went uh, all across the United States 
in urban neighborhoods and collected the case studies and stories from local people about what they had done to make things better. And then based upon that research, we were able to say, here, number one, is what people have been able to achieve. Here's what they have been able to do with their resources about improving health, about increasing security, about uh, lifting up uh, culture, about doing things for kids. Here are all the things that they could do. And also, we, we were able to look at those stories and say, what did they use when they, when they did it? I think we asked that question because the social service agencies and the health agencies and the universities doing their needs surveys, right? So it acted like there was nothing there, that there weren't any resources there. And their studies then would tell what outsiders had to bring in, right? Rather than what would enhance and mobilize the local residents, citizens' capacity to be successful and, and make things better.